is so cool. So this is Taco Tuesday Girl. Hey, I know her. Yeah. Um. This is not boring. Um. I agree with that. Um. My long form unedited conversation. I love it. We're about to get tanned today, folks. Sun is glaring directly on my face, into my eyes. Um, but we're feeling good. We're outside, and that's what matters. A lot of people liked the uh, the guided meditation that I started with last time. Surprisingly, a lot of people enjoyed that. So I want to do it again for you right now. So if you're in your car, maybe you're on a walk, maybe you're commuting, um, I want you to take one deep breath in right now. Nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. <laughs> Ready? One one deep breath in. It's the cops. Open up. It's the cops. We know we know what you did. One deep breath in. And one deep breath out. <sighs> you thought I was going to do. You thought I was going to do another one there, didn't you? Nope. Now it's time to actually relax. <sighs> this is supposed to be a relaxing show. And it's been two weeks now. Since we did the last episode. Wow. <laughs> it just, you know. All of a sudden, you check your watch. It's fucking insanely chill day again. Not that I don't enjoy this. I really do enjoy it. I just, there's not a lot going on in my life. You know? Life has definitely changed speed a little bit. Someone told me that. They're like, having a kid's amazing. Life definitely changes speed. And I was like, obviously it does. But it really does. Things don't move as fast. But yet, you blink and you're child is like totally different we were just looking at him today on the couch he was like he was like looking around like focusing on different things like quickly it was so fucking weird he went from yesterday kind of still in that like he'll he'll i think i said this last time but he started smiling and like almost laughing and it's like the just the best feeling in the entire world we just look like fucking idiots sitting on the couch now going just like bumbling fucking idiots like if you took the baby away it would be like we our brains melted that's what it would look like it would look like we were on just like the the most just the most brain meltingly strong molly in the world just sitting there we just do, just try anything to make him smile. And then once he does, we go, <laughs> oh my fucking God, look at it. And it's the best feeling ever. But he still was going kind of like, it's it's kind of random. Like sometimes you'll pick him up and he'll focus on you and he'll smile. And you're like, yes, yes. And then other times you'll pick him up and look right behind you. And you're like, no, fucking, come on, lock in, dude. Lock in. I'm right here. Lock in. And uh, so, but he went from that yesterday to now all of a sudden today. He's sitting there, like, focusing on, like, me and then Kelsey, and then he'll, like, look around and he'll look behind, and we're like, holy fuck, what the fuck? Like, you're an adult. Like a fully grown man all of a sudden. What the fuck happened to the baby that we knew yesterday? All of a sudden, this doesn't work anymore. Now we gotta, like, tell him, like, jokes, you know? He's, like, speaking English now, pretty much. Like, basically. He's, like, already talking, basically. What are you doing focusing on things all of a sudden? What are you... Stop growing up so fast, you know? It's crazy. They grow up so damn fast, don't they? <laughs> One day they're looking at you like this, and the next day their their eyes, the little little eyes are darting around. Stop focusing on shit. You know? No, it's amazing to see. It really is the best feeling ever. It's just so cool, just every day. So, but, but, so that was my point is that like that stuff's changing. Like, all of a sudden, now he's like two months old. It's like, what? The weeks are just cruising by. But then in my life, outside of that, nothing else is really 
It's really going on. Actually, something big happened on Monday. Uh, I shot a music video, directed it, co-directed it, but it was definitely the the most I've ever had the actual like director's seat before. Even though I shared it with someone, it was like I was still every single shot had my eyes on the monitor. People are asking me like opinions on things, you know. <laughs> like Cody, what should we do about this? I'm like, oh, uh, God, I guess I gotta fucking be the one to make the decision now. And that was definitely, I would say, the hardest thing. It's it was so fun, but I think uh, <clears throat> one of the hardest things about it is that it's like it's it's you're the end all, you know. It's like when there is some sort of ambiguity or something, no one knows what to do. It's like you're the one that has to be like, okay, we got to go this way, even though you might not know it's right. Which, um, I mean, I guess that's a commentary on like, just like leadership in general. But I, I, I think directing, especially in, in, uh, the context of, I mean, directing, I guess in general, you're up against the clock. That's the one thing that's like really different. Is that like, Nemo was the one who DP'd and co-directed it with me, but there was a lot of times where we were sitting there like talking about how, because like everything changes, right? You make a plan and then, you know, you get punched in the face or whatever. Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face or whatever that fucking saying is. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I don't know Chinese proverbs, you know? Everyone has a plan until they get, until they get absolutely just... <laughs> sucked off i don't i don't know <laughs> everyone has a plan until they get sucked off then what do you do um the other day i was watching something and there was a zoc doc ad and i was like to kelsey i was like go to zoc doc they get sucked off and she was like what and i was like ah oh, never mind i don't know i don't know if you watch tmg you might get that i don't even know they stopped advertising with us probably because of that reason but anyways, everyone has a plan until they get zocked off. Zocdoc.com. Um, so you come in with a plan. I wrote this. I wrote the video. I wrote the treatment. I wrote the actual video, and then we shot it. And so you come in with a plan, and it's like you write it to the song. So it's like you have timestamps, and then it all kind of goes to shit because nothing takes as long as you think it's going to take, or it takes way fucking longer than you think it's going to take. Mostly that one. Everything's longer. You in your head for some reason you're like on three times speed. You're like, oh, it takes what do you mean? It takes five seconds for this entire scene to play out, you know? But it doesn't. It takes the normal amount of time, which is this speed right here. You know? You're like, oh, someone could sit down and eat an entire meal and have this whole interaction with the waiter and then get the dessert and then have an argument over who's gonna pay the check and then get up and get the valet and get their car. That happens in five seconds, right? Yeah, that's a natural amount of time for that to happen. And then you get on set and you're like, action. And they like pick something up and that's five seconds. You're like, oh, fuck. I way misjudged this. So, you know, on set everything goes to shit. And then you're kind of like left being like in your head, like how do we tie this together in the edit? Like what is this going to look like? But the whole time you're having that conversation, the AD is in your ear like, Dude, you're, we're going to have to go another hour overtime, which is another fucking $2,000. And then you're like, oh, fuck. So the time that you're spending conversing about it is eating into the time that you could be filming, but you don't know what you're supposed to be filming because you haven't conversed about it. God damn it. Man, I was in it too. I was... Wait to interrupt my, my rant. Everyone has a plan until they get zocked off. So that was the most... That was definitely the most interesting thing about it was having that insight where I'm sitting there like we're talking about it. And I'm like, we can't fucking keep com – we have to make a decision. And uh, luckily, you know, obviously Nima's like so fucking experienced. So having him do it with me was really awesome because he kind of like held my hand but also like respected my opinion on shit, which was really cool. So uh, it's definitely like the biggest budget thing that I've actually done myself. And uh, it just – it didn't – intend to be that way obviously just ended up being that way because fucking music videos are just so needlessly expensive can't wait for what's the is it sora is that like the ai video generator yeah 
just can't wait for that shit to make music videos completely just unnecessary. <laughs> no, no, it was it was really fun. I'm happy we did it, but um, yeah, the budget just ended up being like triple what it was when it started. And uh, but I think it's gonna be really funny. And this is, by the way, this is supposed to come out next week or the week after, so you're gonna see it soon, which is why I wanted to like start talking about it a little bit. Um, but I mean, you know, that was the longest I've been away from here. It was like 13 hour, 14 hour shoot or something like that. So it's definitely like the most work, uninterrupted work I've done. I don't even know if you'd call that work, honestly. It's definitely it's, it's definitely the longest I've been away from here for an uninterrupted hobby session. <laughs> no, it was it was uh it was really cool. I'm excited. But so there was a lot of extras that we got from, you know, what's the what's the uh website back what is it? Castingcouch.com? <laughs> what is it? Rubmaps.com? Isn't that what it is? That's the one. Yeah. Um I had a I had a dude I used to know, we used to live with him that would use rubmaps.com. You ever heard of that? No, I don't know what that is. <laughs> you never heard of that? No. Bless you. I'm sure your I'm sure your wife appreciates the fact that you don't know the website. What is it? It's just it shows you where all the rub and tugs are <laughs> in your city. And they're all over the place. Spoiler alert, they're fucking all over the place. I don't know how. I didn't know this until this guy showed me. I didn't know that this was like a thing that actually I knew it was like in Vegas and like places where it's sort of legal, but I didn't know every it's everywhere. Okay. And it just shows normally you're like a couple blocks away from one. <laughs> Honestly. And this dude would be like, ah, I'm gonna go get jerked off. I'm and we were like, okay. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> it was fucking crazy. So, so you anyways. got your extras from there? Yeah. So, yeah. And then we ended it, So we used rubmaps.com for our extras to cast them, and it just ended up being. Let's just say everyone was relaxed when. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> we got them from the normal fucking site. What is it? Casting networks. Casting, yeah, networks or something like that. And uh, it's just. It's just funny. Like, I don't even know. I don't even have like a real story i guess like one of the one of the we cast these two older people to play these kind of like wholesome parents and uh we're like okay like you know for this you're telling the story of you know when you first met and when you first like uh you know had sex basically and just why listening to this guy like just try to describe the first time they had sex was just so so funny because it's like a comedy music video and they know that so it's like the they the intention is to get them to be like raunchy mm -hmm. and this guy was like when i met your mother she was just so beautiful she caught my eye like no one else and we're like all right we're gonna get to the nasty part you know what i mean and he just wouldn't do it <laughs> it's so funny I don't want to. I don't want to say too much about it because I don't really want to ruin too much. But you'll get it when you see the video. Hopefully, I'll talk. I'd, I'd rather talk about it more if people are interested. I guess the you know two weeks from now because hopefully hopefully it, it'll be out. We got to see how the cut goes because again, like just all over the place. Um. So yeah, that was really fun. So that was what I did on Monday. Um, I wanted to um. I guess I wanted to give an update on the nicotine discussion that we discussed last episode because I feel like I had a, I had a, little, a lot of people resonate with what I was talking about in the comments. A lot of people were also like, "Oh yeah, you don't really realize how much nicotine like has control over you until you try to quit." Or also, I think a lot of people were agreeing me agreeing with me a on the Zen thing, but also b on the fact that. Um, you don't realize like how long you've been doing nicotine. Like it's, it always seems like it's a new habit for you. And then you close you blink and it's been fucking 10 years and you're like, Holy shit, I've spent a quarter of my life on this fucking drug. Um, so that was kind of refreshing to hear. I mean, I obviously knew that it's more, I would say it's more like prevalent now than it ever was. I mean, I don't know if that's right or not. Cause obviously everyone used to smoke back in the day, but just with vapes and with Zen, it's like easy to just be on it constantly. At, at least with cigarettes, people would have to go out for a smoke break. So it's like you have these forced periods of not 
intaking any nicotine. But now it's like you can just do it all day long. I feel like that's how it's new, you know? Like that's what's new about these days, like uh, modern nicotine addictions is that you're on it constantly. So one thing I've noticed that I forgot to bring up last time, I guess, is since I've stopped doing it, and I, I mean, I, I guess maybe maybe this is just how my brain works because I have an addictive personality or maybe this is just me, but I'm going to say it anyways just in case anyone can relate. But um, I've noticed that when you quit a habit like that, a daily ritual, bad habit like that, you kind of get used to caving to it every day. So that you see that behavior show up in other parts of your life. It's like way harder to eat healthier, I've noticed. If you're constantly like caving to a nicotine addiction, I find it's hard to also not cave to like my desire to eat shitty food. Um, so I've noticed it's gotten easier to, to I guess, stick to, you know, a, a healthy diet and stuff since, since I stopped, which is, I don't know if, that's useful information or again, if that's just me, but, um, that has been definitely, and I've noticed that actually, if you listen to the Andrew Huberman episode about alcohol, I think that's like one of his most popular ones. Um, I remember I was sober when I listened, I was like two months sober when I listened to that episode and, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm, like I, I'm not sober right now, so I'm not like this isn't me being like, oh, oh, thank God that it's more just like I was in that mindset when I listened to the, to that episode, and he does talk about how there's evidence that, um, you're more impulsive when, like alcohol makes you impulsive in the sense where even when you're not drunk, that behavior sort of lags and remains and hangs on like when you are drunk of course you're more impulsive that's one of the things that it does is it makes you more impulsive and people like that or they don't like it obviously like it that can lead to horrible decisions and but it all can also lead can lead to like you know social lubrication or whatever but what he what i guess whatever the study he was talking about found is that that behavior kind of hangs on even after the alcohol is out of your system your brain still, for some reason, is kind of like wired that way. So you are more impulsive, even when you're not drinking. Um, if you've had alcohol in the last like couple weeks or something like that, I don't know. Obviously, it's not like as extreme as that sounds, but um, I definitely it's super evident with with nicotine. It's like when you get your brain into this cycle of like every hour or whatever i get this fucking dopamine release it's almost like you're you live you're just like constantly in this sort of cycle of like one hour chunks where you're like biding your time until the next one you know and uh i found that one like once i kicked the habit that my day just became kind of like one long thing instead where i just kind of felt good all day Instead of this, like, feel like shit, crave the thing, feel good, feel like shit, crave the thing, feel good, feel like shit, crave the thing, you know? Fucking, that could be a song right there. That could be a song, actually. That sounds stupid, but I actually think that that could be a song. It's good. The last time I did this, I got torn to shreds on Kelsey's podcast. I was like, wait, all I gotta do is bounce with it. I got people... (laughs) But I want to write that down just in case. What did I say? I don't know. We've got it on video. <laughs> I'm recording it after I recording. just recorded it. Um, feel like shit. Feel like shit. Crave the thing. Feel, <laughs> feel good. Feel like shit. Crave the thing. Feel good. Feel like shit. Crave the thing. There you go. Imagine some female voice. Feel like shit. Feel good. You know? <laughs> We're going to take a quick break to thank the sponsor of today's episode, which is Blue Chew. Spring is about to be sprung, and you should be too, thanks to BlueChew.com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever you got to brick yourself up for a bone ski. (laughs) The process is simple. 
Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part? It's all done online, so no visits to the to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. But your package will not be discreet. Trust me. Does it work? Don't think you need it? Try it for free for a month and see. You're going to love it. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. And guess what? We've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code INSANE at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com. Promo code INSANE to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. What is that right there? That, ladies and gentlemen. Ow! For fuck's sake. Wow, did I just get hit with a perfect fitting t-shirt? Ouch! Ladies and gentlemen, today's episode is sponsored by True Classic. Right here. I got it on. Guys, it's time to upgrade your old workout tees and sweat stains and holes to True Classic's ultra-comfortable, stretchy activewear. True Classic is made with stank-free, moisture-wicking technology so you can do all... all the things in comfort from running on the treadmill to going on a beer run as long as you're moving true classic has the gear for you they've already helped over three million men look great and now you can save big while you move into 2024 for a limited time only get 25 percent off when you shop now with my exclusive link at trueclassic.com slash chill i know shopping can be a hassle for some of us but with true classic i know i'm getting a t-shirt with a great fit and one that's actually comfortable what can i give a little bit of PE yes, on this? Absolutely. I use True Classics yeah. workout shirts as the only workout shirt I wear now. Really? They are the athletic fit on those. <laughs> True Classics send us some more product because I need more. <laughs> they are great. I believe it, man. This sweater is comfy as hell and it fits wonderfully. Yeah. And I don't know how it looks, but I feel confident. So that's a good sign. Yeah. All their shirts are made to accentuate the places the eye goes to first tighter in the arms and chest, but with the perfect amount of room in your midsection. The best part is that True Classic sells their premium products in packs to help you save. Get started with a two or three pack of t-shirts today and feel the difference for yourself. Just in time for spring, True Classic has introduced over 10 new colors in their classic crew v-neck and polo styles. True Classic also has head-to-toe smart workwear for your days in the office. Seriously, whatever you choose, you won't go wrong with True Classic. In fact, True Classic is so committed to their products They even have a 100% perfect fit guarantee and easy returns. So if you're ready to upgrade your closet, shop now with my exclusive link at trueclassic.com slash chill and save up to 25% off your first order. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. No matter how you move, make 2024 your most comfortable year yet with True Classic. So yeah, I thought I would, I guess, give a little bit more insight on that into in terms of what I've been thinking if that is at all interesting to you um but that's it in terms of that what else we got Kelsey and I went out for it was so funny so we've been going out for walks right and like when we first brought Otis home it was like hard also because she was recovering like she couldn't really walk And then we got to the point where she could, but Otis was still kind of in this zone where he was, um, unless he was in the carrier, he really didn't like being on his back for the first like few, few weeks. And I don't know if that's like a reflux thing or what, but he, he really only liked being on his stomach on our chest. So that, so that made it hard to go out on a walk because they're in the, you know, they're in the bassinet and he's laying down on his back. So I would take him out on the carrier, but then it's hard for to block the sun and stuff. So we wouldn't really go out for that long. And then he started enjoying being on his back. So we were like, great. Started tossing him in the stroller. Now we've been going for these walks and they're amazing. We're usually out for like 40 minutes or something. What? Tossing him in the stroller. Yeah, we fucking toss him in there. We lob him in the stroller. And we'll go out for a walk and it's it's awesome. We've been going out for like, yeah, like I said, 30 to 40 minutes. It's amazing. And then the other day we're like, okay, let's try to make it, let's, you know, go to the end, basically. Let's try to get to the, you know, further than we've ever gone before. We both had all, like, the whole afternoon free. So we're like, let's go, let's just go out and get out. And I don't know why the fuck, what we were thinking, but 
we like just left the diaper bag at home, put Otis in the stroller, and we had just embarked on this like two and a half hour journey. <laughs> like idiots. <laughs> and the whole time on the way there, he was fine and we're walking. We're like, this is amazing. We're killing it. You know, we're kind of like get trying to get a workout in at the same time. So we're kind of like, you know, speed walking's great. And then by the time we kind of arrive at the halfway point, he starts like stirring. And he starts waking up, and we're like, oh, fuck. I'm like, I knew this would happen. I didn't know, but I kind of, halfway through the first half of the walk, I was like, wait, what did we, we didn't bring the, di- what if he just wakes up? What are we going to do? We're gonna, we have two and a half miles away from home. It's going to take us fucking an hour to get back. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. He wakes up at the halfway point, starts wailing, because he's, I don't know. And, and then at that point, the sun had also kind of moved. So it was hard, it was impossible with the way that the direction the sidewalk went to get him out of the sun. So we're freaking out. We're like, we still got an hour and a half to go. This is the first like sun is fine for a newborn, but not for longer than like 15 minutes. So we're like hanging, we're like holding him, trying to console him, hanging a hoodie over like you know, one of our head and like hanging it over his body. Like having to stop every because like like I said, like the the crying is in a parent is like this this special part of your brain that like renders you just incapacitates you so the whole time we're stopping every three seconds like should I, i'll just sprint back and get my car and that's come what pick. i was gonna say you should have done no just- but i was like we're fucking a mile and a half like let's just keep going what like it's gonna take me longer to do that than it would be just for just to keep going but we're like in like fight or flight mode we're like we don't know what to do it's so stressful it was hilarious how different the second half was from the first half First half, I was like, we're fucking rocking this shit. We are the best parents ever. Look at us getting a little workout in, taking care of ourselves, bringing our child outside in the great outdoors. On the way back, we're like, we're, why didn't we bring the diaper bag? What the fuck is wrong with us? We are not fit to have a child. He's in the sun. He's getting burnt. He's going to have skin cancer. We're like freaking the fuck out. <laughs> so funny. Both of us are like taking turns freaking out and calming the other one down. <laughs> it was so funny. Like, we're like, like the sun was like this way, right? And we're, we have to go this way. So at one point, like one of us has him and we're like side stepping. We're like walking like this because <laughs> we don't want the sun on him. <laughs> it was so fucking funny. And we got, we finally made it home. And he, I think he was just hungry. And also maybe a little bit warm. Um, and also two months old. And also two months old. Yeah, probably. I think a two and a half hour walk might be a little bit long for him at this point, maybe. I think we might have overdone it a little bit. Um, but so he finally calmed down. We finally calmed down. And uh, and we were like, I think we overshot that. I think we got to reevaluate, maybe wait a, another month or so before we do another one like that. <laughs> it was pretty funny. I'm really looking forward to hiking with him. Like when he's old enough to be in a front-facing carrier, just stick him in there and just go for a hike. How old is that? I don't know. I think probably like in a month or two. I think. He's getting neck strength. Like he's holding his head up. Like when he's on me now, if I'm holding him, his his head's like this for a second. And then he'll... But like <laughs> it's like solid 10, 15 seconds. He'll be like looking around and then he'll be like... Oh. So that's something. Um, so yeah, I think probably another month or two and he'll be, he'll be good for, yeah. And then I want to get a running stroller, start running with him. Um, just go out for a five hour run (laughs) with him in the glaring sun, of course. No, it was just, it was just really funny. Yeah, good times. I feel like um, you have to learn through stuff like that. Because, like, even listening to you say that, right, we're about to have a kid, so I'm listening very intently, like, what can I learn? And you're like, yeah, so we went out. And I'm like, yeah, two, all right, two-hour walk. Yeah. And then when you say, but we didn't bring the diaper bag, I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah, which it's like what was in the diaper bag even that we were, that would have, like, True. remedied the situation. I don't know. a pa- Like a passy maybe. Maybe that would have helped. Probably not. 
there was just nothing like it just like it was just one of those things where I don't even know what we could have done better, honestly. We probably should. We probably just shouldn't have gone out for that long. But half of a wall. There's also probably a chance that he would have just been fine for the whole thing. Just funny. It's just like random and Damn. like. But that's what it's about. Every day is kind of like that. <laughs> uh, like um, he's been sleeping through the night like pretty consistently, and then couple nights ago it was just like we were up all night <laughs> we're like what the fuck is happening i thought we fixed this <laughs> um what was it just he just was i mean it was all it was like a combination of like we were somewhere else we stayed at our parents place this was like i came home late because it was after i shot the video the bassinet that we pack and play that we have was set up wrong mm -hmm. so i'm looking at it I'm like it doesn't look right i set it up and i'm like it doesn't look right and I try to sleep, and I'm like, I just know it's, like, not safe. And then I get up. I'm like, it's, like, 2 a.m. I'm, like, watching a YouTube video on how to set up a fucking bassinet. And I'm like, I knew it. I did it wrong. So then I had to wake him up, reset up the bassinet. Yeah, it was just so funny. Like like I said, like, 2 a.m., like, watching a YouTube video. It's, like, it's like got this fucking cheesy, like, royalty-free YouTube music. Ding, 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 ding. And I'm like, fucking, I knew I set this shit up wrong hating my life because I got to wake the baby up, unzip this thing, you know? And then, yeah, it's like him, like, you know, we get used to this thing and then we change apparatuses and now I'm like, oh, fuck, back to square one. Now I'm worried all the time. Um, but yeah, we got it fixed and then, oh yeah, and then he just decided to like wake up at five and or four or something and just stay up. So both of us, we came out... <laughs> Her dad came out and was like, you guys look like zombies. And we were like, yeah, we we feel exactly like a zombie. Um, so uh, the Oscars just happened, obviously. Um, fucking Oppenheimer, like, cleaned up. Yeah. And I, I, I went to, the, like, the post office or something. And no, that's not or something. I went to the post office. It was definitely the post office. It wasn't like something that sort of resembled a post office. I don't know what that fucking place was. It was like a post office or something. People were mailing packages, but like didn't have... Was it like quite a post office? Was it a UPS store? It was a post office. I don't know. I'm just bad at talking. I My brain is rotting. So, and the guy there was like over... He's like, I heard him talking. They were talking so fucking loud about this guy that was sending a package or something. I don't know what he was doing. I don't know. At a post office or something. I don't know. And uh, they're talking. He's like, yeah, I mean, American Fiction got best adapted sp screenplay. But that's just because everyone knew that Oppenheimer should have gotten it or something. I was like, what? Oppenheimer was good, but it wasn't like that. I think people think it's like the best movie of all time. And I saw American Fiction. That fucking movie is incredible. Have you seen that? I haven't seen either of them. Oh, my God, dude. American Fiction. Oh, my God. What a funny, funny movie. Genuinely so fucking funny. So refreshing to have an actually funny movie. And you know what else was funny? Poor Things. But weird as fuck at the same time. And also kind of dark. But... But very, so much humor in that movie as well. Like, genuine laughs. Like, uh, first of all, Emma Stone's character, so funny the way that she plays it. Um, and then Mark Ruffalo, oh my god, hilarious. So, uh, both those movies, phenomenal. There's a lot of great movies this year. A lot of them. What are you looking at, American Fiction? No, I'm doing work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I forgot I was talking to the audience for a second. I forgot you're not right. <laughs> I'm like, well, this is kind of rude. No, right. I'm doing a show. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, no, both those movies, highly recommend them. Poor Things, definitely the most bizarre movie I've ever seen. Like, you know, I feel like if I was younger, for some reason, like, as I get older and stupider, I want action movies more. I'm like, fucking show me, you know, like the beekeeper with Jason Statham. I watched the trailer for that. I'm like, I cannot fucking wait to watch that movie. 
And I, I, I crave like artsy things a little bit less. I'm just like, I want to see a good revenge flick. That's all I want to see. Someone get some good revenge. That's how I, just, I know I'm getting like stupider, you know? Um, Not to say that people that like action movies are stupid, but like, you know, I would say that it they're less tasteful than like a good like art indie film. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they're all kind of stupid in their own way. Um, But uh, yeah, so poor things is definitely like it starts out it like tries to scare off i would say like the start of that movie it like tries to scare you off if you're if you're a guy that just wants to watch the beekeeper (laughs) like me it was between those two movies kelsey was like poor things is supposed to be really good and i'm like ah fuck it okay let's watch it fucking want to watch the beekeeper the beekeeper if you don't if you don't know I, i just from the trailer i can give you a little summary of the plot it's like Spoiler alert for the beekeeper. Skip ahead to 3714 to avoid spoilers. Jason Statham, like, was a hitman or something, of course. And, like, befriends this old lady who becomes close. I don't know if it's his grandma or his, like, you know, grandma he never had or something like that. And he like leaves the you know the the murdering life behind, and he becomes a beekeeper, and he's close to this woman, and then whoever is hunting him kills this woman, and he's like that, and it's like a no no they hack her, and then she kills herself or something. They the guy the criminals who target her run this like hacking fucking agency, and they hack her to get her to give them all her money, and then she kills herself or something like that I think. So he makes it his like fucking mission in life to get revenge. I'm rock hard talking about this. Does that not sound like a fucking revenge flick to you? God damn it. Feels so good seeing somebody get some good revenge. So it's either that or poor things. Oh, it's nominated for a bunch of fucking Oscars and whatever. Ah, okay, fine. Let's watch it. And if the movie starts out, it's just black and white and so, so weird. And I like I like weird shit, but this is almost like weird because it's like just trying too hard to be weird at the beginning. So it was really tough. And then once you get past the first 10 minutes, it becomes this just hilarious, weird, dark, fucked up story that I don't even know what the lesson was. I don't even know what the point was, but it was a really... that's visually what a fucking phenomenally stunning film when you i feel like when you start making uh i guess you know now that i'm a fucking bigwig director um when you start directing films like the one music video no i directed this is my second actually the fiat music video i directed um this is my second one i guess but when you start directing films you start to realize like how, and I also I've discussed this before, and you know through all of our TMG music, music videos as well, I would sort of have my, like you know Noel would be sending me potential locations and stuff. You slowly realize like how much everything has been filmed to death, especially around here. It's just everything everybody uses the same locations and everything because you need, you know you can't just go film anywhere. You need permits and everything and. So you start to appreciate like how hard it is to make something look different and unique. And that movie, oh my God, the set design, I don't even know where they shot half of that shit. It was fucking unbelievably stunning. So that alone makes it worth seeing. Um, but you're going to bet your, you can bet your top fucking ass. You can bet your bottom ass. That's a mixture between bottom dollar and you can bet your ass that I'm going to watch The Beekeeper. Maybe tonight. Hell. It feels like a revenge kind of night. It feels like... Oh, yeah. It feels like um, I might be eating a dish best served cold tonight. Let's just say that. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, Yeah, we've just been crushing movies. American Fiction, though, so fucking good. Watch that movie. I'm going to watch it again, probably, in the next couple nights, because 
because A, I can't wait for the rental period. I have to buy movies once I see them and they're new. So I own all the new movies. I got that shit in my library and I will be watching it again in the next couple nights probably. And I don't watch movies twice. I don't believe in it. But for this movie, I would because it was that funny. The act, the lead is so fucking good. And the story is so funny. I just, I love it. I love it. A lot of good movies. What's the, what, are, what were the other ones that were nominated? Killers of the Flower Moon. That one. I haven't seen that yet because it's too long. Very long. Is it good? I haven't seen it. Okay. Too long. Too long. What else? Uh, Anatomy of a Fall. So fucking good. Really? Dude, I've never seen a movie like that in my entire life. Anatomy of a Fall was kind of similar to Poor Things, the most unique movie I've ever seen in the sense where it is just like you're not watching a movie. You're watching real life. It's fucking crazy. It's not acting. It's just... It is acting, obviously, because she was nominated for Best Actress, but it's like she... I don't know. Like, it's just... It's like you're watching a reality show. It's fucking crazy. Hmm. It is crazy. It, it, it is like the movie must have been made so cheaply because half of it takes place in a fucking courtroom, but it is gripping. That's one of the most impressive things when somebody can make a movie that's that gripping and not change locations for like an hour. You know? Mm-hmm. So Im- that movie is so fucking phenomenal and just makes you just uneasy. But like really like um, gets into the weeds of like a deep flawed human relationship. Hmm. Like these two people are married and through the court, through the, the process of this case, you just learn about their relationship and it just, it's fucking real, you know? It's like any, it's like you pluck two people that have been married for 10 years out of the oblivion and learned about the ins and outs of each of their flaws and how they saw the relationship but also themselves in the relationship and it's just fucking gripping it's crazy and but like saddening and also it i don't know it's crazy watch that movie so many good movies this year actually did you see zone of interest no what's that oh you don't even know what it is no zone of interest <clears throat> yeah so it's um i haven't seen it but from what I understand, it's based during the Holocaust. It's set- oh the A twenty four one, yeah, and it's like about Nazis. So it's a family that lives outside the fence, and the dad runs the camp. Okay, but they don't ever show like it's just the family life of the family. But they use sound design to let you hear what's happening over the fence Ugh. and it lets your imagination and is he just like a normal family man I, I haven't seen it i'm not really sure but i know that like at one point the mom puts on a coat that like belonged to someone in the camp or something it's like apparently very very like Oof. crazy but well done but like it's i've heard some people be like that disturbed me more than anything i've ever seen hmm. okay i'll watch that one too yeah apparently it's very very heavy I'll probably I'll probably watch the Beekeeper before that. One, <laughs> I gotta be honest. I'm really just I've, I just really want to go in there and watch the Beekeeper. I saw a clip of the Beekeeper on TikTok. It looks very <laughs> it looks good. fucking good, it's right? Very good. <sighs> yeah, I would watch a movie about someone getting revenge on the Nazis. You know, I go in. Oh, I did there. It's not Inglorious Bastards. There's another one. It's like a Swedish movie or something about this dude killing Nazis. That's a great movie too. Uh, guys, we're taking another quick break to thank another sponsor of today's episode, and that is Harry's. Just like Harry's, I'm not a fan of being overcharged. They saw customers getting screwed over by questionable overpriced shaving products and decided to do something better. Instead of charging the same stupid high prices, Harry's found their own way to make beautifully designed razors for a fraction of the price of other big brands. Exceptional products. Honest prices. That's Harry's. I want a smooth and comfortable shaving experience, and Harry's has given me just that. I can get a close shave without irritation, plus it can get delivered right to my door. 
Harry's offers scheduled refills for as low as $2, half of what you pay for other big brands. Get a five-blade razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash chill. You can also try Harry's other self-care products like their body wash, extra strength deodorant, and hair products. Harry's has the highest customer satisfaction in the shaving industry, and it's a no-risk trial. Don't like your shave? No worries. It's on them. They also have a convenient subscription option that you can cancel at any time. Remember, getting ripped off isn't funny. Switch to Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash chill. That's harrys.com slash chill for a $3 trial set. So yeah, the TikTok thing. So the the bill got passed today, right? Bill got passed this morning out so, of the house. So does that mean that they could just ban TikTok at any time? So I just read a little bit about it. It's passed out of the house. The bill says it's got to go to the Senate. And then if it passes through the Senate, then Joe Biden said he'll sign it. It says the bill says they have to sell TikTok or like the U.S. portion of TikTok or whatever to a U.S. company within five months. And if they don't do that, then it's banned. Yeah. And there was rumors that like Activision is talking about possibly buying it. It's like $20 billion is what they said it would be worth. Did they? It was just that in the bill? No, 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 no. That's, uh, I think. I, I've heard $50 billion. I think the published press is what I read it in this morning. Yeah, here it is. Uh, and they're saying, es- I mean, oh, I- no, sorry, estimated price tag over $100 billion. Activision CEO Bobby Kotick floated the idea of partnering to buy TikTok with business leaders, including OpenAI CEO Sam Altman. The Wall Street Journal reports. Over on- Sam Altman wants to buy it? With Bobby Kotick. The dude is just going to be king of the world if he buys TikTok. Like, he'll literally... he'll. He'll literally have the world's most powerful social media platform and then a sentient AI also on his side. Like, he's just God at that point, you know? That's dangerous. Scary. Google should just fucking buy it. Like, I, they have to also be in the running. That's got to be a monopoly of some type. Like, Yeah, true. It's, there's got to be trust issues, antitrust issues there. Whatever. I mean, they obviously should just shut it down. That's what they should do. But um, I, you know, just... <laughs> And I'm just saying that because it's just rotting my brain. But um, I hope they don't because of this one TikTok that I saw yesterday that I wanted to play. Okay? This <laughs> shit, dude. <laughs> this is, I think this is the funniest TikTok I've seen in so long. So <laughs> this dude. The TikTok is uh, mumbling to strangers. He just goes up to people like this man on the street but like he's so good at making his voice sound like he's saying actual English sentences, but he's not. And they're like, "What?" <laughs> you guys catch anyone? Usually, especially like watching country music. Do you guys like at Sawgrass? Usually, come at tour? Or when you guys you start? Come on. I have no idea what she oh, just, just said. Like at, like at the tournament, you guys like, when you pull up here. What? Like just like if you tell, if you tell him or anything. Um. Do you know what he just said? <laughs> I have no idea what he just said. Wait. Okay. Wait. You're saying something about the tournament. Say it again, what? but oh. say it slower. So just like if you're like people like watching country music, you guys like come out usually like to ask sawgrass or how often when you guys like when you come out. Oh, I. Oh. I mean, I go. To, I have a, a ticket. T- uh, take it to. Oh, oh, right, right. Okay. Oh yeah, sawgrass on country music. People always answer like they're like. Oh, right, right. Like they figured it out. Fine. Is it like like talking about like when they come out to tree or usually how when you saw. <laughs> what? Just like usually they go in some type of You have like to literally. talk slower. Talk slower. Okay, if you could, you guys would tell anyone, like, like when you add PGA to the tumor? <laughs> I have no idea what he just said. <laughs> Say it again. You guys like my shirt? Do you like start, start or, or when, when you like, like did you, you go? I'm dyslexic. <laughs> I can't read this. It's so fucking funny, dude. That's the perfect joke. Truly. Why would you want to ban that? That's what I'm saying. For shit like that, I'm open for it to, you know, I'm open for China to keep running that shit, you know? <laughs> do you, like, start or when you, like, <laughs> did right you go? Now. Wait, oh, I just got it now. I just got it. <laughs> what? He was, he was, wait. You know what I said? Do you know what I said? Yeah, my voice is Are you guys, like, talking in tongues right now and I just don't I think, I think you had a little too much to drink. I think you had a little bit too much to drink. <laughs> yeah, I like the shirt though. I like the shirt. I like the shirt. I don't get it. Do you like start or when you like did you go? Fox, I get it. I get it. I go. Oh no. <laughs> Holy fuck. 
Oh, ow, ow. It's perfect. It's fucking perfect. That shit is funny. That's the funniest way to fuck with people in public, for sure. <laughs> That's, I don't know how he's so good at, like... The intonation to make it seem like he's saying something that's real. Try it. Uh, so uh, when you when you came, did you ever caption? No, because he like he like put like real English words in there, so I can't really do it. Like that's what I sound like just trying to speak English, generally. What could you when you could you do? Uh, no, I can't do it. You just have so to do, do you think, that, but okay. But in. when's the last? Do, do you, <laughs> when's the last time you could uh, jam that fart? Fart. <laughs> I can't do it. Like it's clear that I'm. So it's that's like what it sounds like when we are trying to make Otis smile. <laughs> that's what we do. It's so funny. Oh, man. Yep. What else has been going on online? I've been having a blast making YouTube videos, honestly. You've been cranking them out. I film every day. Which is... um. What was the ones I was watching the other day? I almost telegrammed you. and I think it was, was it, uh, Engagement? cringe or something there was you've been doing some crazy videos oh the proposals yeah. one yeah but i guess like a, a lot i don't know like i read some comments that were like oh these are fake like you know these first we've seen these before so it's a challenge trying to find some like original shit that like people haven't seen before that isn't fake yeah obviously yeah. but we're like working on like a like a system for that right now so hopefully you'll see more like that I'm having fun, like, trying to build, like, an actual, like, content, like, machine, which is fun. Like, obviously, we did that for the podcast side of it, yeah. side of things, but, um, you know, and, and reaction videos are really fun for me. I really like them, but uh, it's fun to react to shit that you also kind of created, in a sense, where, like, you're not, like, using crowdsourcing, just because, obviously, Reddit is a huge, crowdsourcing is very powerful, right? Mm -hmm. So we lean on let on Reddit a lot, but like you know that that doesn't end up being truly unique, right? Like finding something and having you know writers actually write you know a segment that another YouTuber wouldn't do because they don't have that content or whatever is is also kind of special. So we've been just like trying to do stuff like that a little bit, um, which is fun. But yeah, I like that you're watching them it feels good when like older males are like not that there's anything wrong with any other audience but you know like i find that people our age are more like you make reaction videos and i'm like yeah but it's more i like riff a lot you know i'm like i'm joking around a lot i try to make it my own you know yeah. like people still think about reaction videos like they thought about them 10 years ago when it was just like someone watching a fucking crazy club going whoa ho ho you know yeah um they're good you're you you and Noel do. What? The content that, that like you guys do is it's good. I didn't really used to watch them and then whenever, you know, we all partnered up a couple years ago, I told Jill's brother, Yeah, I'm working with Cody Co. And he was like, Oh, I love Cody's videos. Oh nice. And I was like, Oh, well I guess if Evan watches them, they're probably pretty good. So yeah. They are. They're good stuff. If you if you're watching this podcast and you don't watch Cody and Co. Uh, <laughs> No chance, no shot. There's any anybody that watches this and doesn't watch that channel. Like I feel like you wouldn't like watch. You would come here and watch this because you watch the other channel, not the other way around. Shout out in the comments if you don't watch Cody's. Yeah, yeah, no, please. Videos. If you're just a really big, insanely chill fan, I want to know. Which maybe there are some people. You know, I don't know. I guess I just I say that because there's nothing wrong with the show, and we take it very seriously. I guess I'm just saying that is because we're in this like weird like period where we're not having guests for a little bit so it's like maybe i yeah i i don't really have the most like to have an individual podcast i was kind of thinking about this earlier because i was like I, yeah i used to do insanely chill by myself but it was never that like successful when i started having noel on and we started joking around and stuff like that's when it really and and other guests too that's when it like really took off so it's like i've never really had 
the the presence to like carry an hour just like by myself in terms of like my jokes and opinions and stuff, which I'm fine with. But it's not like I'm like Tim Dillon, for example. Like that dude, it's like I can watch him for an hour because he's just fucking hilarious and I'm not going to be commenting on politics and stuff on here, you know, for an hour because I don't really have any opinions from that realm. So it's like, you know, um, so I get it if no one's like a, a huge, you know, I see head. It's like, I come, I came to listen to Cody ramble for an hour every two weeks and I'll be damned if I don't get that. You know, I think you'll be surprised. Yeah. Maybe your people are just like, I'm just here because I'm trying to quit nicotine, dude. <laughs> it's like I, you know, saw the title and the thumbnail of the last episode and thought you'd talk about it more this time, which you did. We did. I did. We are going to start having guests back on soon, though. Someone was like, someone was like, I'm, I don't know why I'm just like, I'm disappointed that to find out that Cody used to do nicotine. I was like, dude, everyone does. What are you talking about? It's a hard habit to kick. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just human, man. That's the thing they don't know about Cody. Cody's just human. <sighs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just a person, just like you. I know. I just, I know. I look like the most nicotine resisting mega super dude ever, but no, I cave into that shit just like you sometimes. Um. No, I've been a I've been a prisoner of nicotine for fucking ten years. It's crazy. But you're off it again. Yeah. Or question mark? I mean, I guess. no, no, I am. I am. I had one night where I relapsed, but now I'm back. So it's been one night in the last two and a half months now. Um, but that's another thing. Quitting something like this is not linear. You got to remember that. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Well, you know, I think I'll start wrapping up now. I'm trying to think if there's anything I missed. Give me one second to look at my notes and think for a second. My first show is in a month, so I've been like working hard at trying to finish up um, some edits that I'm making, some remixes I'm trying to make, and also, like, getting a bunch of new music. That's, like, the most fun part about DJing is, like, just getting all this new music that I just love anyway. It's, like, it's fun discovering new shit. But, like, you know, trolling SoundCloud and hitting up your fucking friends who are DJs being like, you guys got any more edits? It's just fun. I like doing that shit. So I've been compiling new stuff for the show that's in a month. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, So yeah, new song next week, next Friday, hopefully not guaranteed. I'm saying that on here because it's not a guarantee, but if it's not next Friday, it'll be the Friday after. Um, And I'm excited about it. I think it's a different type of song. I think my voice is a little bit different on it. Um, I recorded myself and I just played around with my voice a lot and I thought I found a cool kind of tone. So maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't. Um, But it's with someone who I think you'll enjoy as well. His verse, I love it. Um, And we had a lot of fun making it. And we shot this great video for it. So hopefully you'll see that. And hopefully it's good. I have no idea if it's good or not. Hopefully it is. So keep an eye out for that. Maybe we can talk about more about the process next time. I'm going to start having guests also again. So let me know who you want to see on the show as well. Um, I want to get you on Obsessed. Yeah, I want to do Obsessed for sure. I want to do Obsessed with Hobbies. Yeah. With Cody Coke. Yeah. You have so many fucking hobbies. Yeah, I love that. Let's do that. Yeah. And then maybe we can have her on Insanely Chilly. Yeah, yeah. Would love that. Are we... (laughs) We use the same set, so <laughs> <laughs> we can just do one right after the other. But Change also, the colors to blue and yeah. start going. But also, if you have guest ideas, we need them. Put them in the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm talking, I'm talking like YouTube people, but also like traditional media people too. I would like to start maybe utilizing my PR and having people, have going out and finding people that I actually don't have a ton of common with and trying to become a better interview. I definitely 
down for that challenge. So if there's anyone that you'd like to see me with, let me know. That might spark some ideas. Um, what else? I think that's it. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. You're under arrest. Put your hands up right now. You're going to prison for life. Nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. And I appreciate you. And uh, see you in two weeks.